The east coast of the United States is covered with elliptical features that seem to be the scars of a cataclysmic event in the Earth's past. Some people describe these as just ancient sinkholes that filled with water and were shaped by the wind, but if you look carefully, you will find that most of these features have a mathematically elliptical geometry. These ominous ellipses are called Carolina Bays, and there's a reason why they evoke fear and apprehension. They could have been created by colossal impacts that brought death and great calamity to North America. This LiDAR image shows some Carolina Bays near Beaumont, North Carolina. The Carolina Bays have been described as aligned oval or elliptical depressions with raised sandy rims that are found along the east coast of the United States. There has always been an argument about whether the Carolina Bays are oval or elliptical. Professor Douglas Johnson, who wrote a book about the origin of the Carolina Bays, consistently characterized the bays as oval. This was in 1942, before LiDAR was able to provide detailed images of the terrain. LiDAR gives us a completely new perspective about the Carolina Bays. Aerial views that show a patchwork of farm fields are transformed into very clear images of the land surface. The elliptical geometry of the Carolina Bays is also clearly evident around Tatum, South Carolina. Many of the bays have been modified by erosion and land movement. Nevertheless, one of the most important characteristics of the Carolina Bays is their mathematically elliptical geometry. There are many clusters of elliptical bays along the east coast. Those ellipses are not just figments of our imagination or the result of wishful thinking. The mathematically elliptical geometry of the Carolina Bays can be confirmed by selecting points along the rims of the bays and fitting the points with ellipses using the least squares method. However, this precise characterization of the geometry of the base is currently ignored by scientists. According to the mainstream geological explanations, the Carolina Bays originated from wind and water mechanisms or from thermocarst lakes. You heard that right. Most geologists believe that wind acting on ponded water created these huge mathematically perfect ellipses. In 1977, Raymond Kocherovsky wrote a thesis comparing the Carolina Bays to oriented lakes, such as those found in Alaska. He conducted a sand table experiment where he carved a circular pool and set a fan to blow over the water. Page 93 of his thesis has an image of his experiment with a caption that says, a diagrammatic representation of model lake changes from circular to elliptical perpendicular to the influence of opposing winds alternated every 15 minutes for a total of 4 hours. Sediment removed from the maximum transport zones along with sediment derived from nearshore areas produced a net accretion in the areas where wave of approach angle was low. Initial lake diameter was 65 centimeters. Even though Kosharovsky described his experiment as changing the model lake from circular to elliptical, the experiment only produced a structure like a bloated American football with pointy ends, which did not have the smooth geometrical characteristics of an ellipse. By alternating the direction of the wind by 180 degrees every 15 minutes, Kosharovsky created conditions that are not found in nature and invalidated his argument about prevailing winds. Kaczorowski's thesis was never published in a geological journal or subjected to peer review, but it has been widely cited by proponents of the wind and water hypothesis. This is a satellite view of the aligned lakes in Alaska that are frequently compared to the Carolina Bays. Do you see any mathematically elliptical lakes? Do you see any clusters of adjacent elliptical lakes? The answer is no to both questions. Thermocarst lakes originate as sinkholes that form in permafrost during thaw cycles and then they fill with water. The Carolina Bays cannot be ice melt landforms because there were no glaciers or permafrost in North Carolina, South Carolina or Georgia even during the last glacial maximum. Nevertheless, Professor J. Meloche classified the Carolina Bays as thermocarst lakes in his book about planetary surface processes. The Carolina Bays are mentioned in the context of active thaw lakes that are found in northern Alaska. Professor Meloch says, Such lakes constitute the infamous Carolina Bays, which impact crater enthusiasts persistently claim to be of impact origin, in spite of the complete lack of evidence for impacts. In 2012, Moore, Brooks, Ivester, Ferguson, and Feathers made a presentation at the GSA annual meeting in Charlotte, North Carolina, with the title Carolina Bay Formation and Evolution. Kaczorowski was right. The author said that historically the Carolina Bays have received attention from those speculating on a catastrophic emplacement through cometary, meteoric, or airburst impacts, and that while these claims persist, the Carolina Bay origin and evolution are much better explained through lacustrine processes of wind on shallow ponded water. 
Moore et al. 2016 described the evolution of Herndon Bay in southeastern North Carolina and related this evolution to regional climate conditions prevailing during the late Pleistocene. The authors interpreted the multiple rims as evidence of bay migration that maintained the characteristic shape and orientation through lacustrine and aeolian processes. The authors say, quote, through the use of wind table modeling, Kaczorowski demonstrated that strong prevailing winds from the southwest and the Carolinas were responsible for creating circulation cells that shaped natural depressions into ellipses and oriented bays perpendicular to prevailing wind, end quote. However, as discussed earlier, Kaczorowski did not use a prevailing wind in his experiment and he did not obtain ellipses. He changed the direction of the wind every 15 minutes for 4 hours and obtained a pointy structure that was not elliptical. The article in Wikipedia about the Carolina Bays says that most geologists today interpret the Carolina Bays as relic geomorphological features that develop via various aeolian and lacustrine processes. This is again the wind and water hypothesis. In 2017, I published a model for the geomorphology of the Carolina Bays in a peer-reviewed journal. The paper proposes that an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet ejected pieces of ice in ballistic trajectories, and the secondary impacts of the ice boulders liquefied the ground and created inclined conical cavities that transformed into shallow elliptical basins after viscous relaxation. About two years after my publication, on February 18, 2019, I added to Wikipedia a citation to my peer-reviewed paper with a single sentence saying that the Carolina Bays had elliptical geomorphology. About four months later, on June 25, 2019, the reference to my peer-reviewed paper was deleted. The explanation for the deletion was that the reference was to a paper by a non-expert. Many articles in Wikipedia are curated by opponents of impacts and catastrophism. For example, the Wikipedia entry for the Younger Dreyas impact hypothesis is a discourse against the hypothesis rather than an objective description of what the hypothesis proposes. There is plenty of evidence that the Carolina Bays have a mathematically elliptical geometry. There are hundreds of Carolina Bays that confirm the elliptical geometry. Large bays are elliptical. This one has a major axis of 928 meters, which is 3,028 feet. Nine football fields can fit in here. Medium-sized bays are also elliptical. This one measures 692 meters in length. The rectangular feature at the bottom is a complex of livestock barns. Even the small bays are elliptical. This one measures 471 meters and it overlaps a much bigger bay which looks faded in the background of the image. South Carolina also has Carolina bays with a typical elliptical geometry. This is an example of bays that overlap while maintaining their elliptical shape. Only five points are needed to define an ellipse. So the shape of a Carolina Bay that has been partially obscured by another one can be reconstructed by fitting an ellipse to the points in the visible portion of the rim. Since ellipses are conic sections, it is likely that the Carolina Bays originated as inclined conical cavities or penetration funnels, as can be demonstrated by impact experiments of ice projectiles on a viscous target. The conical shockwaves of projectiles moving through a viscous medium offer a plausible mechanism for consistently creating conical cavities that produce mathematical conic sections on the target material. The random and variable forces involved in aeolian lacustrine or ice melt mechanisms cannot guarantee the consistent production of elliptical structures. The text of Moore's 2016 paper about Herndon Bay says, quote, Carolina Bays evolve over many millennia in the same way that a meandering river migrates through, reworks, and erases evidence of former channels. Evidence of multiple sand rims and bay migration demonstrate this explanation most clearly. Thus, a catastrophic origin is neither supported by geological data nor needed to explain features attributed to Carolina Bays. End quote. Does this mean that we should stifle our curiosity and not seek an explanation for the mathematically elliptical geometry of Herndon Bay? That is the question. Should we just suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous geology, or take arms against improper science and by opposing, fix it? These are some topics that geologists need to address. If the Carolina Bays are impact structures, what made them? If the bays were made by wind and water, what are the physical forces that can guarantee the formation of ellipses? Why can't we find clusters of mathematically elliptical lakes in Alaska? There are many more questions, but we should start by trying to determine why the Carolina Bays are perfect ellipses. 
Thank you for joining me in the study of the Carolina Bays. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool by Michael Davies in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.